Here's a problem. Do you hear the tail of that kick? Why is that such a big issue? Well, if you want to deliver on super punchy kick, the sample looks like this, transient and a lot of sub afterwards. And that sub's on the tail of the kick, and on the tail of the kick, guess what there is in the production? There's an envelope which opens up into a bass line, and this skews the energy. Take a listen to this. The downbeat, which should be driving the song, has less sub-energy on the transient than it does on the sustain. This is dwarfed by the bass line on the upbeat. Now, EQ won't introduce frequencies that aren't present on the transient. Dynamic processing won't compensate for that because that's a processing of amplitude. And multiband compression won't do it either because again, there's no frequencies on that transient. This is an issue in the time domain. The sub-energy which happens after the kick is the issue. So what's the plugin I wish I had? Well, I wish I had a linear phase three band filter with the ability to introduce negative delays and independent volume envelopes for each band. This plugin doesn't exist. There are linear phase multiband processors. There are delay processors. And yes, you can have negative delays by declaring latency within the plugin architecture. And as well as that, there are volume envelopes like kick shape. And now some of these coexist. So two of these might exist together already in the marketplace. There isn't a plugin where all three of these tools exist within the same plugin, the same framework. So I've had to create this all manually. I've manually created my own plugin here sort of plugin it's a lot of processing bit by bit and this also becomes a bit of a sound design exercise but i've been so eager to show you this because it's such a really cool solution to get a kick drum that absolutely smacks you in the gut and i wanted to show you this for a while moose scarf who's this song is it's not even released he agreed to let me use this ahead of time so there's a pre-save link in the description below to go check out the track when it's out but I'll show you what I've got here. So what we've got is a linear phase crossover. Now this linear phase crossover uh, is low, mid and high. And the way I would imagine this is this linear phase crossover would set three windows with the waveform of the kick drum for the low, the mid and the high. So I'll just show you that and pr process that now. If you want to know how I created this, I'll leave a link in the description below to Dan Worrell's video on it rather than re-explaining it here in this video. So what we'll do is we'll commit the mid, low or the high, mid and low print here. Let's just do that. Hit record. Beautiful. Now what you can see here is you can see the transient information in the mid, the high, and then if you look here on the low, you've got this big envelope that happens afterwards. I'll just group these so I can open these windows up nice and big. There we go. And that's where the issue is. We don't have any of this sub energy on the transient, which we should, which we should have. So we'll just get rid of that. We'll get rid of that. We'll solo these. And that's all that's important to us for now. Um, so what I want to do is shift this forward. So this sub energy comes forward and then I envelope shape it. So it fits in with the transient uh, uh, sustain, decay and release. Okay. So AS ASDR. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it's spelled. So let's, let's get this show on the road. So first things first, you cut that sub. So you, uh, this wouldn't happen in the plugin. I'm doing this all manually. Um, so what we're going to want to do here is shift this forward on the grid. And what we'll do is we'll play this on a little bit of a loop. And this loop is going to sound funny because you're going to have a little bit of um, flaming going on between the kick. But I'll show you how you fix that. And that you can fix with a gate within the plugin that takes the original data. But let's just get this show on the road here. Okay, that's pretty tight. And then what we want is we want to take this initial transient because the problem we have here at the moment is we're losing some of the tack of the kick because those mid and highs originally phased with this bit of signal down here. So it'd be good if there was like a blend knob or an original signal knob where you could take that original bit from the start that gets delayed before time and recut it back onto the grid because I'll show you what happens to the tack of the kick. I'll mute this low print. 
and I'll play this here. So the next thing is the envelope portion. So what you'd have is you'd have the linear phase crossover. You'd have three windows that would look like this. And then you'd have little delay sliders. So you could shift this back and forth. And then you'd have envelopes. You could have predetermined envelope shapes, or you could be able to customize the envelope shapes, whichever works. But for me, I sort of look at this here and I go, okay, well, I know I want a lot of sub at the start. So we're just going to pull this portion of this up here. And then we want it to decay out. So we're going to, just draw this in here, put a little, another marker there. We'll draw this in, comes down and sustains out to there. And we'll just draw that in like that. So now we have a kick drum I'm pretty happy with. Let's put that to the printer. So I can bring this up to the original one. Okay, we can cut that on. So now we've done that. We've created the linear phase crossovers. We've shifted the sub back in time. We've drawn an envelope which sort of matches a sustain and a punch that is somewhat similar to the original. The real test is how does this sound in the mix? I've tried to keep the original transient in check, um, which is important. You want to keep the original transient of the mid and the high in phase with the original low. That's why I've got this blended um, signal in the bottom here. I've got this, this little clip here blended in because without that little clip here, the, the, the click changes in character. So I've kept that in phase, that portion there. But the real magic is going to be, how does this actually sound in context with the whole mix? So what we'll do is we'll copy this across. And we'll just copy that all the way through. Beautiful. And let's just have a listen to this with the baseline to start with. The one thing is we lost a little bit of that clickiness to it. So let's just sort of bring that a bit of that back in. So what we'll do is we'll commit these. We'll go into clip effects. We'll add a little bit of top end to this. Right, so I've just brought it down a decibel so it's in closer level with the original. And let's have a listen before and after. So now the real test is how does it sound with the rest of the track? It slaps, that kick hits you in the chest. It's actually really cool. Anyway, this is a plugin I wish I had. I wish I had a plugin where I had linear phase crossovers, little windows with low, mid, high. I could slide the delays and then I could apply envelopes to each of those um, waveforms. Anyway, that's the plugin I wish I had. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Um, if you think you like this, if you didn't, but more so importantly, something I know I wish I had when I was starting out was a really good newsletter to follow that wasn't spam in my email. And that's something I do because I'm the best newsletter for working audio pros. There's a link in the description to sign up. There's over 255 star reviews. There's 1500 other audio professionals who are receiving this and enjoying it. Like everybody pretty much reads it. I don't have a low, um, like clicks through rate, like people read it. They enjoy it every week when I send something out there on it. So make sure you subscribe down there and until next time, take care.